Um, Jeffrey and I are coming this morning to uh, give you an update on behalf of the pastor search committee. So um, if, you, if you haven't already heard, you know that our pastor that we called Rusty Griffith, he passed away this, this past Thursday morning. Um, I, I got a phone call Thursday afternoon at about two o'clock from his father-in-law uh, in Florida and he told me that, that he had passed away. So there, I asked if there were any immediate needs for, for the family and, and of course he asked for prayer for, <clears throat> for Larson and for Rusty's children and um, they're going to let us know the arrangements tomorrow. He's being taken back to uh, Griffin, Georgia. That's his hometown, and that's where he's going to be buried. Um, we, we called an emergency meeting Thursday afternoon at 5, and we, um, we asked Brother Ruffin, would he be willing to stay as our interim pastor? And he has agreed to do that. The search committee that's, that, that you elected is, is still in place. It's, it, it will stay in place. And right now, I don't, I don't know when we'll resume the search. Uh, we've talked about maybe starting back after the first of the year. So <clears throat> we have Brother Ruffin in place. and. We're just going to press on. Um, if, you hadn't, if you hadn't had a chance to, um, to see it, there's a letter from Brother Calvin on the bulletin board back there, and Brandy also put it in the, uh, in the newsletter. So if you get a chance, read that. It's, it's, a, it's a heartfelt letter. And it's it's a uh, it's a comforting letter, so um, that's really all the update that I that I have at this time. And um, just keep keep his family in your your prayers. Keep those children at uh, his church in your prayers. He had a he had a group of over 300, so I'm I'm sure that they're having a, a hard time dealing with this. And uh, Jeffrey's going to come now, and he's going to lead us in prayer. Church family, pray with me, please. Lord, we ask that you and your magnificent power, you be with Larson, Judah, and Izzy. Lord Jesus, please comfort them and their family, their church, their youth group, our church, Lord Jesus, in a way that only you can. Lord, our human minds don't understand certain things that happen, but we rest in your secure arms for your guidance. Please, Lord Jesus, guide, direct us in the ways that you would have us to go, Lord Jesus, and just have us seek your will. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for first loving us, Lord Jesus. And all these things we ask in your precious name and all God's children said, amen. As we begin our worship service this morning, I invite you to stand, we're gonna sing some awesome songs, What a Friend We Have in Jesus at All Times, and then It Is Well With My Soul. Yeah. 
be seated and children y'all can go to children's church
We come to worship today with a sense of sadness and some bewilderment. We were all set for a new pastor to begin here on October the 1st until the events of last Thursday. As has been indicated, our first response should be that of prayer. We need to pray for Rusty's wife and those little children whose daddy won't be coming home. But remember, there is no broken heart that God cannot heal. And there is no falling tear that God cannot dry. We need to be in prayer for the church family there in Tampa, especially for Rusty's youth group, over 300 youth. He was their leader, he was their friend, and they're hurting now. We need to be in prayer for the extended family, for Rusty's mother and father, for his in-laws. And we need to be praying for the pastor search committee here. They spent hours and hours and hours in prayer and in research, seeking God's man to be the shepherd here. And now they start over. We need to be, they're a good committee, good people. We need to be praying for them. We need to be praying for our church staff. We have a good, good church staff. And their plans have been terminated and, and uh, they have to start over with their thinking. So we need to be praying for them and for the church family here, for each of you. What is our purpose? Well, our purpose is reaching people and ministering to people, helping people, and loving people. But sometimes along the road you hit a bump, and we've hit a big one. So what do we do? We keep on reaching people. We keep on ministering to people. We keep on helping people. We keep on loving people for the glory of God, just as is our purpose. Well, I had prepared a sermon for today to prepare us as a church for a new pastor. But as of late Thursday evening, I discovered that that sermon is no longer acceptable. So what do you do? Well, you go to God and ask, what, what do we need now? What is the message that you have for us now? Well, I threw away a lot of suggestions, but I finally came up with what God wanted for today. And the scripture is Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God will supply all your needs. That means that when we depend upon him, our needs are met. God will supply the needs of Rusty's family of that church and of this church. God will supply the needs. This is God's word. This is what God says. We must depend upon him and trust him and look to him for leadership and for guidance. So this is God's word for us today. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So. Let's examine this passage. First, let's think about the supply. My God will supply. Now that word supply means to fill full. 
It's like you take a bucket and you put it under a water faucet and you turn it on and you let the water fill the bucket, but you don't stop, you don't turn it off, you just let it run over. That's what this word supply means. Fill full, fill to overflowing. God will supply. And notice it says will supply, shall supply. It doesn't say might. It doesn't say God might supply all your needs. It doesn't say maybe God will supply all your needs. It says God will, God shall supply all your needs. That's a fantastic promise. Oh, that's a fantastic promise. And look at the word all. God will supply all your needs. Doesn't say a few. It says all your needs. God will supply all your needs. And look at the word needs. It doesn't say wants. It doesn't say desires. It doesn't say a wish list. It says needs. God will supply all your needs. Now, some of the needs that we have is as we look to the future, there's uncertainty, there's fear, but God takes care of that. He's going to supply our needs. If you look in this fourth chapter at Philippians in verse 6, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God. Now the word and is a connective word. It connects you to what has just preceded. And what has just preceded is verse 16, don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which surpasseth all understanding will guard, surround, garrison about your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So that takes care of our uncertainties. That takes care of all of our fears. Well, we have burdens, don't we? Well, God takes care of that too. Jesus had a word about our burdens in Matthew chapter 11. And verse 28, Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Now look at that word, come. That's an invitation that you find over and over in the Bible, again and again. And even in the last chapter in the Bible, the last chapter of Revelation, right toward the end, there's that word, come. The invitation of God, come. And who are we to go to? Jesus said, come to me. Come to me, all of you. Doesn't leave anybody out. There isn't anybody that isn't included. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. So we bring our burdens to Jesus. He will supply our need. And we need forgiveness, don't we? We do things that we shouldn't do, say things that we shouldn't say. But God takes care of that. In 1 John chapter 1 and in verse 7, the blood of Jesus, his son, God's son, cleanses us from all sin. In verse 9, if we confess our sins, he, God, is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's God's word, that's God's promises, that's what God says that he will do. Now these are wonderful promises, aren't they? Some years ago, a teacher tried to count all the promises in the Bible and he counted 7,487 promises in the Bible. Now, I don't know whether that's right or not because I've never tried to count them all, but I know there's a lot in there. 
Now, some of the promises in the Bible are meant for a particular person at a particular time. Like when God promised Abraham, I will make of you a great nation. And he did, the nation of Israel. But that promise was meant for Abraham at a particular time. But these promises that I'm reading to you today, these are meant for you and for me. And we can accept them and we can believe them because God said them. Sometimes people promise us something and they don't deliver, but God delivers. And when he says, I'll supply your needs, he meant it. So we've looked at the supply. Now let's look at the source. And the source is seen in that expression, my God. Now God led the apostle Paul to write this letter to the Philippians. And he says, my God. This is the God of the Bible. This is the God of Paul. This is the God of Abraham. This is the God of David, who is a shepherd lad, maybe five feet tall, was enabled by the Spirit of God to kill a Goliath over nine feet tall. This is the God that's talking to us here. This is the God of Peter and John in the New Testament. This is the God of Jesus. God allowed sinful man to hang his son Jesus on a cross and his blood paid for our sins. So if we trust Jesus as our savior, we're saved and forgiven. And he was buried. And then on a Sunday morning, God rose him from the dead. This is the God we're talking about here. My God. And then look, look at the expression, according to his riches, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. God's riches are inexhaustible. Sometimes we have things that play out. <laughs> we run out of stuff at the house sometimes. Our refrigerator or our cabinets may not have something in it that we want. God's riches never runs out. Never, never, never runs out. We talk about the supply of oil that we have under the ground and out under the Gulf of Mexico. That it'll last thousands and thousands of years. But when that all runs out, God's riches and glory will still be there. Sometimes, you know, we have things like back during the pandemic and transportation was difficult and we'd go in the grocery store and some of the shelves would be empty. Well, when all the shelves in all the world are empty, there'll still be God's riches and glory because they never run out. They'll never run out. And that is the source of our supply. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And so we need to take advantage of his riches in glory. But some of us are sleeping spiritually. An 85 year old widow announced to her daughter that she had a date with a 90-year-old widower. And the daughter said, Mama, you can't do that. You can't go out on a date. What do you mean? Mama said, such and such a night, such and such a time, he's coming to pick me up, and we're going out on a date. Well, daughter realized that she wasn't getting anywhere, so she said, okay, but you better be in by 11 o'clock. Now that's a twist, isn't it? Daughter telling mama what time to be in. So just to be sure, daughter goes over to mama's house and she sits in the living room and waits for mama, 85 years old and her 90 year old date to come in. 
10 o'clock came, no mama. 11 o'clock came, no mama. 11.30 came, no mama. 12 o'clock came, no mama. Finally, mama comes in. Mother, what are you doing staying out so late? And she realized she was coming on a little strong and she said, did you have a good time? And mama said, it was horrible. Horrible? What happened? Well, I had to slap him three times. What? You mean he got fresh with you? No, he kept going to sleep and I had to slap him <laughs> to keep him awake. Well, some of us are sleeping spiritually. Some of us are sleeping spiritually. I had a deacon one time in another church, of course, that used to go to sleep every, every Sunday morning. Now, he couldn't help it. Uh, when he came home from work and sat down in his recliner and he sat there and be still a few minutes, he'd go to sleep. He, he couldn't help it. But uh, I didn't fuss at him, but I did like to tease him, you know, <laughs> pick at him about it, and I would call him by name, and I would say, you know, I, you must really trust me. You go to sleep and sleep all the way through my sermon. You must really trust me. He said, oh, preacher, pastor, I'm not sleeping. I'm closing my eyes and I'm meditating. Uh-huh, yeah. Some people are sleeping spiritually and need to spend more time in the Bible and more time in prayer and get awake spiritually so that we can be the people of God in this world. We can be the church that this world needs today. We need to be awake spiritually. Well, we've looked at the supply and we've looked at the source. Now let's look at the Savior. Look at the last part of this verse. According to his riches in glory in or by Christ Jesus. So this promise, my God will supply all your need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. This promise is for people who are trusting Jesus as Savior. It's not for everybody, not for anybody. It's in Christ Jesus. That word, my, my God, the Apostle Paul is saying, I have a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So our ability to handle what comes that ability comes from God in Christ. So we have a choice. We can depend upon ourselves, our own intelligence, our own abilities, or we can depend upon God in Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus Christ that we can handle the crisis that comes, the burdens that come, the problems that come, it must be personal. Can you make this promise personal? It's the only thing that counts. Bobby Jones was the best golfer in the world back in the 1940s. He had a house full of trophies. And he had a scrapbook full of clippings from newspapers. He, he had it all. He was, he was the golfer, the professional golfer during those years. Three days before Bobby Jones died, he prayed to receive Jesus Christ as his Savior and asked a pastor to baptize him. You see, all those trophies, all those clippings didn't do it. He needed Jesus in his life and in his heart. So today, the message of God for us is depend upon the Lord. My God will supply all your need through his riches and glory by Christ 
Jesus. This is God's word for us today. The original Queen Elizabeth, I have read, was a very, very beautiful woman. And she knew it. But the years went by. And her beauty began to fade. And she knew that too. And so all of her servants, they removed all the mirrors in the palace so that Queen Elizabeth couldn't see what she really looked like. Now, we need to see what we really look like. And if you need Jesus as your Savior, now is the time to receive him into your heart. Today is the day. I don't care if you're a young person or a young adult or middle-aged or a single adult, if you senior adult, if you don't have Jesus, you need him today. You need him today. And won't you ask him to come into your heart and be your savior today, that all of the riches and glory might be at your disposal when Jesus is your savior and you can depend upon the Lord. Perhaps you're here today and you don't have a church home. Now I wanna tell you this is a good church. These people here are loving, they're caring, they're welcoming, they're gracious, and they would welcome you with open arms if you feel led to come and be a part of this church family. I would encourage you and invite you to come. Maybe you need to rededicate your life to Jesus. Maybe you need to come down here to the altar and spend some time in prayer. Would you do it? Bow your heads with me. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you're right here today with us. You never leave us, you never forsake us, even for a moment we thank you. We thank you for this wonderful promise in your word that we know based on your word that you will supply all of our needs from your great riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Now, Father, those who need to come today making some decision for you, we invite them to come. We encourage them to come. May your Holy Spirit touch them just now. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you stand together as we sing, as God leads, you come.
right, just a few announcements for us. Um, one, of course, get you a bulletin. If you didn't come in on your way out, they're at the Welcome Center. Uh, just grab you one. It's got everything you need to know about our church and what's going on. But one that I want to point out is we are having a bridal shower this afternoon at 3 o'clock for Chloe Gant and Justin Irby. Um, where are they? Justin, you don't have to show up. <laughs> don't, don't even come. <laughs> but y'all come join, join us for that. Um, the ladies are going to be working hard getting all that ready, and it'll be a good thing. But we've got a lot going on. Uh, in the church, and it's all right here in this bulletin. Grab you one on your way out, and you'll be up to date. And put yourself in, in insert yourself somewhere. There's a lot that you can be doing. Um, I just want to say one thing about you know everything that's going on. That we need to stay focused on the fact that God is in control, no matter what. That's what I've been reminding myself of. And I think we all need to do that. It doesn't, whatever's going on, God is in control. He's actively working in this church. I know that for a fact, and he's in control. So y'all just continue to pray and take God's lead, because he's going to lead us. And I'll lead us now in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you. I, I want to thank you for what you've done for this church. I want to thank you for how you've blessed us. I thank you for leading us, guiding us, and I just pray that you will continue to do that. Just comfort us, bless us, and lead us into the future. And I just thank you for, for giving us such a great day to come to your house and just to worship you. Now I just pray that we'll all go out and spread the good news about your son Jesus to this lost world. In Jesus' name, amen.